let's learn how to use buttons with Discord, JS version 14. The first step is to access a text channel. Be sure to include your own channel ID on the highlighted line. Next, we want to fetch the recent messages in this channel and find the ones that were sent by our bot. Let's now find the first message sent by our bot by using the first method. This will either return the message or null. We can also create a message object that will hold information about our message. We'll add buttons to this later on. Finally, we can check to see if the first message exists or not. If it does, then edit the message, otherwise send a new message. The next step is to create an action row builder. This will hold all of our buttons. Be sure to include this on your message object. Let's create the button by using a button builder and passing it into our row object. The custom ID is what identifies this unique button. Later in the video, we'll use this string to handle button clicks and pass data into the button. The label and emoji are simply what is displayed on the button. You can style your buttons in a few different ways by calling the setStyle method. You can also have your buttons act as links by using the link button style. If you do, then a custom ID cannot be set on your button, and you must pass in a target URL through the setURL method. Buttons are fairly useless without listening for clicks. Let's listen for the interaction create event near the bottom of our file. This event is fired whenever any type of interaction is created, but we only care about button interactions. So if the isButton method returns false, then we want to return from the function. This is where the custom IDs come in handy. We can access the ID of the clicked button and compare it to the ID we used previously. If they don't match, then return. Otherwise, we're going to reply to the user who clicked the message. And if that didn't work, then ask for help in our Discord community. A link can be found in the description or the pinned comment. Right now, we only have two buttons. It's important to keep in mind that if we include six or more buttons on a single row, then our bot will crash. Also, we can only have up to five total rows per message, so each message can only hold up to 25 total buttons. Let's create a simple utility file called buttonwrapper.js to help solve this problem. This function is going to take in any number of button builders and will return an array of component rows. If any single row has more than five buttons, it will automatically create a new row. The first step is to loop through each button. We will use a standard for loop so we can keep track of the index. As previously mentioned, each row can only have up to five buttons and each message can only have up to five rows. So we want to make sure we only loop through a max of 25 times. Before we add a button to our row, we need to make sure that row is not full. We do this by first checking if A is divisible by five. We also check if A is greater than zero because zero is divisible by five and we don't need to create a new row if we just started looping. After our if statement, we can finally add the button to our row. This will work fine if we always have a number of buttons that is divisible by five, for example, five or 10 buttons. However, this won't work otherwise. Let's say we have three buttons. We add all three buttons to the row object, but we never add the row object to the components because three is never divisible by five. After our for loop, we can simply check if our row has any buttons added to it. If so, we can add this row to our components array. So to recap, we now have a utility file that will take in up to 25 buttons and safely add them to a components array and then return that array. Let's now import this utility near the top of our main index file so we can use it to handle our buttons. We can now create an array of button builders and pass those into our button wrapper utility file. The returned value can be passed in as our components array when sending our message. With this said, you can also remove the action row builder import at the top of your file. When running our bot, we still see the same two buttons. We can take this time to try out the buttons too. With just two buttons, we don't actually see a change because they are still on one single row. We'll want to use six or more buttons. We'll also take this time to create some data to associate with each button. The button data array can contain any type of data you want to associate with a button. In this case, we'll have a simple message that will be sent to the user when they click the button. Feel free to expand on the objects in this array to include things such as button labels, button styles, or even entire functions to run when a button is clicked. Want to add a website dashboard to your bot? Or maybe you want to monetize your bot but you're not sure how? Check out our Level Up Your Bot course. We cover command handlers, secure hosting techniques, dashboards, and monetization. Join hundreds of other students with the link in the description. We can now loop through each button data object and associate the index with the button. That way, when the button is clicked, we can access the object from the array based off of the index. 
For now, let's take a look at what our bot does in Discord. We see six buttons on our message. The first five are on one row, and the sixth button is on its own row. This is thanks to our button wrapper utility file. You might notice that clicking these buttons doesn't do anything anymore. That's because our IDs are different now. To fix this, we can make a global variable to hold the prefix of our button's custom ID, and then use that prefix when creating our buttons. We can now update our custom ID check in our interaction create listener to use the new custom ID prefix. Next, we can remove the button prefix from the custom ID to access the index associated with this button for the button data array. Once we access it, we can pass it through parse int to turn it into a number instead of a string. Finally, we can reply to the user with the message associated with this button thanks to the index from the custom ID. Clicking on the first three buttons should now reply with like and subscribe respectively. You can see how this concept would be useful if we added role IDs to each button for a toggle role feature. In fact, that's exactly what I show you how to make in this next video.